Nuella, it's uh, it's been a couple of months since I've seen you. First off, you look amazing as always, <laughs> and um, I I'm gonna let you let the folks who are watching this on Reedy Blair Entertainment Media, ReedyBlairMedia.com. When was the last time you and I saw each other? You know what? I don't know. <laughs> Oh, um, oh it my. was at the this, no, no, no this interview's done. I'm going away. <laughs> Thank you. How I only say that because the last few weeks have been insane for me. I've been on like ten different flights across the country, but I think it was at the El Macombo. Yes. That correct? Okay. okay, you've come El back into my favor. I've come back. Uh, the Alma Convo, yeah, no, that was that was a fun night for sure. Yeah, you were a headliner for the uh, Lemon Stage as we were slowly wrapping up. In fact, I do believe it was the last show that we were residency at the Alma Convo, the Lemon Stage. And here's the thing that I always remember about your performance was that anybody who's been at the Alma Convo knows that when you are going to perform, you have to deal with loud crowds now thank goodness i was the host and you know i'm there to try to pump people up and things like that but because we're next to a bar sometimes people just keep yapping during the performance and stuff and of course you have an r b sort of set and things like that and you kicked it off with just one note and you shut everybody's mouth up who and I should even rephrase that. You stopped them from speaking. You didn't shut their mouths because their mouths were like this. <laughs> and you had them throughout your performance. And I wanted to mention that because it just shows the power that you have in your voice and in your music. Congratulations on doing that. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it, it's weird being on stage because you're so focused and in, in your own world of like trying. And especially we were playing a lot of new songs. So I was just like, remember the words, remember the words. And so I don't really sometimes I'm able to take in with the all like the audience's reaction. Apart from like after the songs, I'm like, oh, God, I hope they liked it. <laughs> but like to hear that just makes me feel so good because it means that, you know, I'm resonating with people and that it's coming across how I, I hope it would. So Excuse yeah, that's me. Awesome. <laughs> three juno nominations and you're hoping you're you're come on i mean i think when you're in yeah again like just in my own little world i just keep trucking and i just keep trying to do the best i can and hopefully <laughs> it when, continues to work <laughs> I, you know you and i really have never because whenever we've done interviews it's always been on a red carpet mm. and um we really don't get a chance just to sit and just you know talk away yeah um but where did this whole thing because you are an an r b music queen okay and uh you represent this country so well where did that love really begin for r b soul and so many other genres too yeah i think i mean for me it kind of stems back to like just rock and roll honestly like my dad I uh, had a bunch of records growing up and my mom always had Whitney Houston and Mariah Carey. So those were like, I call them my vocal teachers when I was like five, um, trying to belt along to their songs. But um, yeah, music was always a part of our life growing up. And I I like all sorts of genres. I It's always hard, you know, like, yes, I kind of fit into the R&B world, but I wouldn't classify myself strictly as an R&B artist just because mm -hmm. I have so many loves and so many influences that I pull from that for me it's like I don't know and like a lot of people hear different things so it's yeah I just kind of give it up to whatever people want to think it is but <laughs> it's just my kind of brand of soul rock you know R&B pop music that you know I've kind of just developed over the, the last few years and just keep I keep experimenting and I keep you know, never trying to do the same thing twice and working with different people has always helped me grow too. So it's been a journey for sure. Yeah. Have you ever been compared to Liberty Silver? No, I don't know who that is. <laughs> and wow. Then, yeah. And here's the thing about me too, though. Like, I don't know a lot of names of like uh -huh. artists. Like I'll probably like, if you play something, I might recognize it, but like, I, I'm just so bad. Like, yeah that's okay i'm gonna ask you when this interview is done look up liberty silver i've known her for years she is a queen 
um, from back in the day who's still performing. And your style and things remind me so much of her with the power mm -hmm. of the voice. Uh, I'm curious also, too, um, when did your parents notice that our little girl can sing? I don't know. Like, I, I just always remember being in choirs, like all through elementary school. I was the one in choir, um, but I still played every other sport because it was like our whole family was into sports. But I was like the lone like drama choir theater person. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know if they ever truly encouraged me to keep singing. It was more like when I decided to be an artist, it was like, okay, you have two years. And then if it doesn't work after two years, figure it out like do something else or like maybe time to reassess and so after the first record and how well it did they kind of just stopped asking questions <laughs> but yeah no it's it's i can just as long as i can remember i've been in choirs and singing and dancing and all that stuff let's jump right over to that what was the first record the first record was aware it came out in 2012 so this october marks 10 years which is crazy to think um and it was just my kind of like okay i and i think it's part of my you know swiss side like my dad's swiss and they're very like militant and do they have like a plan and they follow the plan so i was like okay i gotta make a whole business plan i have to you know if i want to compete with the major label artists i gotta look the part i gotta you know sound the part all this all the marketing has to be tip top so it was like me learning the industry as i was putting out my first record i read a lot of books <laughs> on like how to run your own independent like label and whatnot just to get a sense of what it's really like in the business because nobody teaches you that you kind of just have to go out and learn and experience what it's like to actually you know compete on or well, not compete but like to release music on a commercial level because it is a business did you ever want to sign with a major label and would that ever happen for you in the future I think it depends a lot like it was I mean I guess it's always everyone's dream to be signed by a label but as you continue on like especially for me having I mean the mid-level success that I've had um, by myself it's like okay I can still continue living like having a living doing this and if a label ever were to come along they would really have to offer something that I couldn't turn down. And of course, you got to have as much control as possible, because I think these days that's extremely important. I'm curious because you just talked about you've been on planes and flying around. Do you remember your first international trip as an artist? Yeah, I self booked a tour uh, around Switzerland. Um, and so I think it was like 2014. Um, just I booked a band in, in Switzerland and kind of did a, like a little trio tour around. And it was really neat just being able to see, you know, faces that I've never seen before in venues, and especially there because they don't really, uh, it's not that they don't care who's playing, but it's more of a cultural thing. Like they will go out and discover new music, which I found was so refreshing. Like it's just like, let's go out to a bar and see a band or whatever, you know, like that's what they do. And I felt it, I felt so appreciated. Um, we played in, in Bern and it was a sold out night all from like the website's promo and like the venue and whatever. And it was amazing. Like it was ridiculous. <laughs> then let's jump a little bit. Do you remember your first Juno nomination? I do. It was 2016 for the Grand Hustle and yeah that was a whirlwind i was definitely sleeping when the nominations happened because i was like yeah what in my mind I, there was a little bit of doubt you know like mm, okay whatever it's not gonna happen and i was in edmonton at the time and so um i missed it and my phone started just like going crazy <laughs> i was like what happened like you know like what's going on what's the emergency and sure enough everyone was like congratulations and i'm like for what <laughs> And then I and then I realized that I started freaking out and then I was like, what do I do? And then like the first thing I did was like find like a PR company and was like, okay, let's go. <laughs> Strut Entertainment, uh, yeah. one of the best PR companies that you can find anywhere around the world. Yeah. And, um, you know, they're hustlers, you know, and which is when I guess you and I first met on the second Juno nomination on the red yeah. carpet when it happened. You weren't going to be, you weren't going to stay in bed this time. <laughs> you made sure you were there. Yeah. 
Yeah, I was there and it was just such a treat, you know, like every time you're kind of acknowledged for what you do is always really special. Um, at the end of the day, it's not about the awards or the nominations, but it's really like as an independent, it really is just like a little pat on the back. Like, you know, you're not alone. Other people are recognizing your hard work and I really appreciate it. But let's make sure people know what big names are you going up against also? You're an independent okay. artist. Let's go into that so people know exactly the categories that you're, you know, you're competing against. Yeah, I think the first year, well, Michael Buble. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Michael Buble won that year and the subsequent year. But it was like just his caliber, you know, Jan Arden, Brian Adams, um molly johnson white horse um oh my gosh there's so many like it just and then they're all like major label acts and little old me you know like it's so it's definitely special to be in that same category and you know even when they just announced the nominations um at the junos it's like whoa <laughs> it's like michael buble and Nuella charles it's like that's really cool i love that how do you think your your songwriting and storytelling has changed over the years leading up to what we're going to talk about your your upcoming new self-titled album yeah i think when i started like i was very much a singer songwriter with my acoustic guitar um very introspective kind of like diary style writing it was very sad but just i was an emo girl for sure <laughs> and as i've evolved and you know started working with other people um my goal has always been to write songs that are more universal and have messages that other people can latch on to, um, but still being true to myself and like, you know, telling my stories and my observations um, is very important. But just having that little bit that someone can be like, oh, I recognize myself in that song is really important just to, you know, I don't want it to be all about me. Like I am the artist. Yes. But it's like I'm trying to just give a little to the world and hopefully make their day a bit better. So yeah, it's definitely involved and I'm really just in, continue to work with new artists and songwriters and learn new things. And I'm always inspired. Yeah. You know, we talked about uh, your songs have led you to three Juno nominations. It has also led you to some award wins, three letters, H E R. Can you explain what that is all about, <laughs> please? Yes, this year I was so fortunate to be able to be the grand prize winner alongside Cave Boy for the SoCan Foundation Her Award. Um, and this is the second time I believe that they've given this out and just such an honor. And I think for me, it really hit home when I got to meet uh, the people who were on the jury who actually made the tough decision of selecting uh, the, the winners because they were all women in the industry that I've looked up to for so long and admired from afar. And so I was like, whoa, okay. <laughs> it was like, they recognize, again, it's like just being able to have other people recognize the work that you've put in for so long when you think you're just on this little treadmill by yourself, you know, like, you know, you're, you're going and going and going and kind of with the blinders on and just to have people recognize that, no, like you've got this really was special. Okay, let's get to something that's more special than anything else. Mm -hmm. It's always the music, releasing new music, and it's a self-titled album. What is this self-titled album about? How does it represent you today? Yeah, I think yeah, I, mean, I think I could say like for all of us during the pandemic it was really a, a reflective time. Uh, for me, it was a moment where I was like, do I want to keep doing this? Do I want to keep being an artist and putting out songs. I felt like I was just spinning my head. And so when I started writing and I found like this amazing producer partner in Matt Parad at like this random Zoom songwriting camp, um, it was like inspired me to write and to just really speak my truth. And uh, I was deep into affirmations during that time. And so a lot of it was like just telling myself like I am worthy, I can do this, you know, like I'm all, yeah, it sounds cheesy. I'm awesome. But like, you know, like I what I do is worth something um, and I shouldn't wait for outside validation to believe it. Um, and so sonically, lyrically, everything, I feel like this is finally the Nuella Charles that I've been trying to get to. And I'm so excited that 
I'm here now and it's really <laughs> nothing can stop me. I'm all the way up, <laughs> you know, like that kind of feeling where it's like it's only up from here and I'm super excited. Yeah. Look, you're going everywhere else around the world. When are you coming back here to Canada, uh, Ontario, Toronto? When are you gonna yeah. give us some more performances here in the Great White North? Yeah, so I'm in Hamilton September eleventh and then I'm off to Germany, which is gonna be super fun. Um, and then back to Calgary at the end of September. I'm hoping to get a show in Toronto this fall for sure. Um, itching always to play. It's just about finding the right date um, that works for everyone and that can just make it such a special night. So definitely coming. I'm still working on the date though. Just curious because this usually happens in the summer as we speak in the uh, summer is slowly wrapping up. Any chance for a Christmas album or a Christmas song being released? Ooh. Uh, right now i can't say mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not it's not been something that's been on my on my radar um but i definitely have a few out already which are really fun um and an original that i just thought was super fun and just cheesy and everything christmas um but yeah no it's something that i hope to do down the line and I think, you know, you always love those classic records. And if I ever get to ch the chance to, to make one, I would want it to have that feel, kind of that Motown soul kind of vibey Christmas. So, yeah, hopefully one day, but I don't know about this year. <laughs> Got well, a lot th going on. <laughs> thank you so much for the interview. Uh, congratulations on the new album coming out. Um, and thank you for allowing me to introduce you. Um, oh. It was a... It was a definite honor and to be able to be that close to the stage because of course I got premium seats because I'm hosting <laughs> um, to see you in action is uh, an amazing experience and anybody who sees you perform feels that also uh, looking forward to seeing everything that you're doing and knowing you with this album but I'm gonna say I'll see you on the red carpet at the Juno Awards <laughs> next year it's you know what it's like you know the sun goes up it goes down you got the moon stars and you on the red carpet for the juno awards it's gonna happen so congratulations oh, thank you thank you so much this was great